that's kind of the stuff I really dig. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, me too. my wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, cool. So let me let me just uh, leave a little bit of a pause, and then we'll start. There we go. Okay. Rob McNally, how you doing from Nashville? Good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm I'm just was checking out your music this morning and on the old Spotify, and uh, I heard checked out your new, newest uh, single, right back at you or right back to you, I should say. Yeah. And uh, really cool. Like it's kind of Americana rock. Or what would how would you categorize it? That that's what I would call it. I mean, if if you know, uh, growing up, it would have been just called probably rock. Exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, we have nowhere to go now. You know, um, if if you you know. So yeah, that's what I would call it. That's the you know, yeah, awesome. Yeah, and you've got um another single coming out um in August. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yes, Daryl. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it's kind of a single driven world these days, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, especially for an indie artist too. I mean, you've got to you've got to kind of prolong your uh, promotional uh. <laughs> uh leverage over over the time of releasing like an ep or something you know um yeah yeah, yeah i think I yeah, it seems, that. yeah it kind of it seems like the album days i don't want to say that's dead but it's definitely it's changed from when when we were young and maybe i might be older than you i don't know <laughs> but well i grew up on albums you know and uh yeah i miss that format a lot i hope that uh, eventually that swings back around you know because i think it's much more immersive you know yeah you kind of get the full fleshed out story maybe um yeah. tell me about how, how you i know a little bit about your background so you're originally from ohio mm -hmm. um and your your father was a musician right yes correct yes yeah so yeah. tell me about that growing up and, and with him and the music in the house how was how was that for you well it was cool um you know it kind of normalized the lifestyle so i didn't have to go through telling my parents i wasn't going to go to college you know, um, <laughs> right. I mean, that you know, um, it uh, it was great. There were musicians in and out of the house all the time. My dad was always writing songs. And and uh, so I was around uh, at least some version of the creative process, you know, and just kind of the kind the kind of oddball characters that gravitate to this uh, line of work, you know. Um, so I just it just. Uh, it made sense to me. I didn't know that that wasn't going on in other houses, you know, other dads weren't doing this. Uh, right. But, so it seems normal, right? <laughs> yeah. I just, it just, I grew up and music was always on or people were playing it or people were writing it or whatever, you know? So I was just, it was something that fascinated me from an early age, you know? Was your, um, was your first passion songwriting or guitar playing? What, what, what kind of grabbed you first? Probably songwriting. Um, uh, you know, I just wanted to play guitar good enough to to know enough chords to write songs, yeah. you know, um, and then at some point I got the guitar bug as well. And uh, that's when, uh, you know, I kind of had this uh, yeah, dual, you know, paraline, parallel roads going somewhere, you know. Right. Yeah. It kind of it kind of grabs you. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Do you, do you play? Yeah, I actually started on guitar and I've been a bass player for now for many years. I was uh, Cirque du Soleil and, and a bunch of okay. a bunch of I used to do like Gary Puckett and Frankie Avon, a lot of those guys um, who kind of, I kind of it was cool about them was even though they were oldies, they always worked, which which helped. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, awesome. yeah, and then you have I mean, there's a lot with you because you're uh, I think it's three times guitarist of the year ACMs, right? Well, yeah, I just I just won the uh, my fourth one this yeah. year. Awesome, um, like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, CMA Musician of the Year nominated. Uh, yeah, that's nominated. that's yeah, that's a huge accomplishment in a town like Nashville because you got a lot of great great players. How, how did you how did you end up coming to Nashville? What, what was the the kind of the reason for that? Well, uh, you know, I was making a living in Columbus, Ohio, playing music, but it was all you know um there's there's not a music business there so it, it like you can play clubs you can play all kind you can be in all kinds of bands you can plenty of great musicians to play with up there but uh i i don't know i just want i just felt like if I, while i was still young enough to do it i just wanted to get somewhere where there were um 
uh, maybe more opportunities to make it even bigger impact musically or, or make a better living, you know, um, financially speaking, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and it's hard to, there's only a couple of places where you can make a living as a songwriter too, as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And I haven't really made my living writing songs, but, but I'm close to it and it's something I've kept doing, you know, and it's why I'm putting out music now, you know? Right. Yeah. So a lot of people have seen movies like The Wrecking Crew and, and, mm -hmm. and those kind of things. And you kind of have you've sort of lived that life because not only as a session guy, but also as a live player. And how, yeah. how did you get into what was your first kind of really good gig in Nashville where you thought, OK, now something's happening? What was the kind of the first few gigs for that? Um, well, I, I could point to a couple different ones. Um, the the first uh the first oppor big opportunity that I felt like I really got um, was uh, playing with uh, Winona Judd. I, I got that gig for a, a little while. Awesome. That was cool because, I mean, I knew that it was it was something that people knew about, you know. Right. Uh, but um, really, I feel like uh, shortly after that, uh, I, I started playing in Delbert McClinton's band. And that musically was the right fit. Um, you know, I had all kinds of gigs leading up to that, but um, for the most part, uh, I didn't always feel like, I, you know, I was, I was uh, the best fit for like my pat, my most passionate kind of music. Yeah. You just kind of make um, it work and. That's a gig. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they were all great and great people and, and the music was really all great, you know, and, and all that. It just uh Delbert fit. That was the first time where I felt like the, the two things came together where I was making uh good money, uh, or at least enough money to, you know, pay for my life. And right. um but also musically speaking, uh I really felt at home playing in his band and I learned so much. I was there for eight years, you know. Wow. Yeah. And he's, I mean, Delbert's very well respected musically too. Like, well, I mean, yeah. Winona is too. And the, the, there's yeah. so many, so many hits and she's always had oh, a, great, yeah. a great band, but Delbert's got a, he's got a special lane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the lane that I always feel like, you know, it, he's kind of in between all the cracks, which is what became Americana music, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's how I feel I am. And that's probably, why I also gravitate to session work because it's, it's something different every day, you know? Right. What, what's your, what's sort of your preference? Cause a lot of it's, it's funny. A lot of the session guys, as I'm sure you know, this, a lot of them just really don't go on the road because they're yeah. going to, they get out of that loop. So what how have you, how have you managed to kind of walk that tightrope and make it work? Well, uh, it, it, you mean as far as like, uh, staying in town versus road work? Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, Mostly I do stay in town uh, because it because once my session career, well, well, I should say Delbert started slowing down a little bit and um, that left me in town more. So gotcha. I would be in town like Monday through Wednesday or Thursday and and people just started asking me to do sessions. I, 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 I wasn't trying to do that. I just had more time to do it. Yeah. And they thought and, and at the time, I, I think they just thought it was cool to bring in somebody that uh played with del I, like i would hear that a lot you play with delbert we think that's really cool like think of it like you're what would you do right it's more along those lines so that helped me get um into the scene a little bit and then i didn't really and then once my gig there fizzled out i was just doing session work full time hmm. and i didn't go on the road again until bob seeger came along and asked me to you know join or join a tour of his and and i did, ended up doing three different tours uh with him but other than that i do stay in town you know it has to be something that really you know like a bob seeger or something like that to yeah to it's make... hard to it's hard to turn down bob's gig <laughs> oh yeah it is it is and i wouldn't you know i that was a whole nother great experience but um for the most part, I do stay in town. I I don't know. It, it just it just it, 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 a lot of it comes down to financial reasons. What right. you know, something can really make it worth your while to not be in town and risk losing some session work over. 
then you then you can go do it. Yeah. Right. And then also it gives you a chance, like you said, to kind of work on your songwriting, work on your own stuff. It's hard. It's a yeah. little hard to do that on the road because you're so busy and you're you're yeah. always hopping on and on and off a bus. Right. Yeah. 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 You think you're going to get all this stuff done and you have the downtime to do it, but you're never alone. <laughs> yeah. And, you're t- yeah. and you, get, you get tired, too. I know. It's, it's, yeah, you get tired, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You want to. And so do you uh, do you have a, a family there? Are you married? Do you have kids and all that? Uh, I live uh, with my girlfriend and uh, yes, uh, I have a daughter here um, and uh, you know, that's another reason that it's nice to stay in town. Yeah. I was just going to say, yeah, it's nice to have that option. And it's funny because Nashville, a lot of people outside of Nashville, they kind of think that like Brent Mason plays guitar on everybody's record, but that's actually not, it's not true. And you can't physically do that anyway. So it's nice to be able to get worked into that scene. Did it, was it something that, you felt like was a hard nut to crack or it just kind of it was really organic for you? Well, uh, for me, it was organic, um, but it is a hard nut to crack. Um, and and probably what made it easier for me mentally was that, like I said, I I, re- I wasn't trying to become a session player. It, other people just started asking me to do it when they would see me play out in the clubs, uh, you know, and stuff and and I was meeting so many songwriters and it just they just started asking me to do it. Now, if if I moved to town trying to be a session player, that could have been a frustrating process cuz it takes a long time to to bust into the scene cuz there's so many things about it that you have to overcome. People have to get to know you, they have to be comfortable with you, they have to they have to like you. <laughs> of, yeah, they have to like you. There there's a lot on the line that before you even pick up your instrument and play. Right. You know, um, so it takes a while. I mean, I was here a good uh, 10, no, maybe close to, well, I shouldn't say that. I was here close to about, probably about eight years into moving into Nashville is when I first started like doing sessions actively. Yeah. So, well, just, you know, in Nashville, I mean, there's a lot. It's fun to walk down on Broadway and you see all the guys banging away at the clubs and yeah. that can be a hard road. But if you really love music and you really want to play a lot, there's an opportunity and that that doesn't exist everywhere these days. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, really, it's not none of this is for the faint of heart. I mean, you've got you're in a town, like you said, where everybody can play on every instrument. There are exactly. so many great options. And and, uh, you know, you you got to love doing this enough to stick all that out and be there when and st- still be standing after the beatings, you know, I mean, <laughs> exactly. you know, I mean that's, that's really what it comes down to sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I've always said that too. Like a lot of times it's really the, the last man standing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets, it gets the worm, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It's like yeah. being a telemarketer, you know, you're calling <laughs> 5,000 people, but only two of them want what you're selling. You know, that's exactly right. You could be the be- best widget maker of the world, but if nobody's buying widgets, you know, exactly. um, yeah. So you're, you're, um, so on the songwriting front and doing the singles and that kind of thing, what really have you always been releasing or is that something that's kind of a newer thing for you to, to get your own stuff out there? Well, I've not always been releasing, but I've always been recording. Um, you can see behind me, I've, I've this, this is my studio. This is, you're seeing yeah. you're not the console is back here behind the, Computer. This is my fake. This is my fake studio. <laughs> okay, yeah. See, see, I mean, that looks amazing. <laughs> it's funny. I've actually had. I was talking to Rodney from Fame down at Muscle Shoals, and he was in his studio B, and he goes, "Man, your studio is nice." I said, "Yeah, it's fake." <laughs> oh, that's so funny because I was going to ask you about it. I was like, "Dang, man, you got some killer gear." Um, you know, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I've I've all, I've had a studio for for several years now, and access to world class studios through you know all the connections I have here, but. So I've always been recording and, and I, you know, I'll get, I I just finally realized that I have so much stuff that I need to start putting out. So that's what's, that's what's happening. You know, I've been, I've been so busy in session world that you can, you you can just get sidetracked, you know, and forget what you've got on the hard drives, you know? (laughs) Yeah. You're just, you're kind of nose to the grindstone working and, yeah, I'm kind of the same thing for me. Like, you know, you you have all this stuff you want to do and you look at, you go, well, I've only got so many years to get everything done. Yeah, really, really, it's it's the people I hire, the people in my band when I play out, um, the people that play on this stuff or the engineers that work on it or mix it or whatever. They're, 
they'll they'll bug me you know like what when are you gonna put this out are you ever gonna put this out we worked on this you know and uh <laughs> and so some that's what kind of gets me like to go back and like well yeah i need to set aside time and like go through and listen to this and figure out a plan you know and and then another two months goes by and then another right. you know, and then here comes another project oh, okay after i get through this i'll do that and and you just have to put your foot down and finally go enough already it's time yeah. Time to, you know, why did I do all this if I'm not going to share it? And so that's what's happening, you know, and I'm excited. Well, that's it's great. And it's great to, you know, for people to hear and, and see a different side of you, I guess. And it's and something that's really close to your heart versus yeah. like, like, I mean, we all have to work. And and you and you're like you say, if you're fortunate enough to find a gig that pays, but it's also close to your heart, that's the best of all worlds. It's, and it's not always easy to find that. Right. No, it's not. I mean, you know, yeah, I've, I've, you know, I mean, like I said, I've enjoyed everything I've ever done. I have found something about it to really enjoy. Yeah. But there are definitely those things. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's there are those times where you're 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 yeah, you're making you're making money and, and you're, you know, doing the best thing you can for their music and all that. But it's maybe not necessarily something you would always go listen to or whatever you know right yeah that's okay yeah and i think that that's that's the, the best way to be find find the light find the light in whatever you're doing and yeah and like you said plus if you got good people then and it's it's fun to play with good musicians and it doesn't really matter what the music is almost you know yeah um yeah. so tell me about like in, in terms of you know you've kind of lived that whole world from songwriter session guy live guy what's some of your advice for people not only that would come to Nashville, but just young musicians and songwriters in general, what's some of the, the key points that you've sort of learned that you'd like to share? Well, uh, let's see. I, I, I get to ask this all the time from, from young players moving to town or thinking about moving to Nashville. And, uh, you know, I've lived so many lives, uh, as far as like, uh, the way this all happens, the playbook has changed so many times since when I started. So I don't know how to tell people like, do this to get started. All I can say is with, you know, I, I was doing this before there was really, uh, you know, the internet options of recording or, or the, you know, um, uh, the technology that, that we have now to pro right. tools, all that stuff. Um, and so I think that the common denominator through all of it is just show up and play. Just show up and play. You don't have to work anything. You shouldn't have to work an angle. If you can show up with a good attitude, be easy to work with, and always be consistently giving results where everybody in that room is happy with what you're doing. And if they're not, go figure that part out. You will right. figure that out. There's a there, There's so much stuff about this that you can't possibly know until you're thrown into the position anyway. So the one thing, the, th the things you can control are, are your commitment to being a positive force um, and being easy to work with and, and trying and, and show that you, you care about this as much as they do, you know. And if you do those things, the playing side should take care of itself, you know. And, and that's what I would say. I mean, you know. It, it, yeah, and I think it's it's really important for young guys, especially, to understand that it's not enough to be a good player. It's it's yeah. there's so much more, right? That the attitude. Exactly. Talk about that in particular with the attitude and and how important that is. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. When it comes to session playing, the thing that you always have to. I came up being in bands. I was in a band. I wrote the songs for the bands. I you know I was the guy in the band. Yeah. Put the band together a lot of times, or that was the singer or whatever. And it's a completely different mentality. And so many people move here from their hometown where that's probably what they did too, was playing bands. Well, if you want to be a session musician, you're not in a band. You're, you're a hired gun. You are, uh, you, you are there to do everything they're asking you to do the best you can and inflect some style into it where you can. But, but that, that's the, that's, that's the good attitude part. A lot of times you're going to come up with great ideas that your band back home would have loved. Right. But this artist <laughs> exactly. on this record in this format of music today 
isn't coming from that place. Right. You know? or, or the producer who's actually paying your check. Right. <laughs> yeah. And let's say let's say like like when I was, you know, when I was getting in the session world, like uh, I, I can't tell you how many times styles of guitar playing that I completely did not value or like or ever work on would get asked of me to do you know, hey, can you get this sound from X and X record and, and but play this part that's like this band and you hate both of those things? <laughs> so like, guess well, I what? guess I can. <laughs> yeah, you, the answer is yes, I can. And you exactly. have to not just mean it, you have to know how to do it. So you end up having, I, the, the greatest lesson I've learned over and over again is to not discount any form of music or anything out there that it, it, it be you know it it all is going to show up somewhere on a session if you do this enough. if you get to a high level exactly yes yeah. you might be end up playing with david foster and you're sitting there going how did this happen <laughs> well and and what if you are in the room with david foster one of the biggest geniuses of pop music of all time like you got to be able to hang with that you can't just bullshit your way through it you gotta hang with it you know right exactly yeah so that, I mean, that's so important yeah so having an attitude uh, about any of that is is just going to get in your way you know you're going to be not thinking the right thoughts that you need to be thinking, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You got to get out of, sometimes you have to get out of your own way. <laughs> and I, I've stumbled over myself thousands of times. Oh yeah. As we all have. Um, <laughs> how, how can people find you? I, I'm obviously you're on Spotify, Rob McNelly. You can find that under artists. And I, I already searched that this morning, but how can people find you? You have a website, social media, all that stuff. Well, there is a website, but honestly, the best way to find me is, uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook. Um, that's where I'm more active and that's where that's what's more up to date and keeps keeps everybody in the loop with what's happening. Awesome. Yeah. And they can they can ask questions or, or whatever. Yeah. What, yeah. What's your uh, just to go over a little bit? What What's your favorite gear? Like what's your what are your plan? Is it a telly? I, you kind of assume that for Nashville, but <laughs> yeah, uh, tellies are in my life for sure. Um, and and I gravitate to that a lot. Um, not just for country music, but for all kinds of styles. It's it's such a great basic platform. But uh, you know, that's the thing about session playing is is I have several guitars because you need several guitars. So right. um, when I play with my band, I'm usually playing either a Les Paul with P90s or nice. a yeah. or or a Tele. Um, I kind of like the two pickup platform. Uh, you know, it's simple. And, and so when I'm most me, it's something like that, you know? Yeah. yeah it um, just sounds good. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. And I'm so up there singing. I can't have a bunch of stuff I need to be on control of at all times. Now, if I'm playing behind somebody else, I'll play a strat. I'll play, I'll play whatever, you know? Yeah. All I have to do is play guitar. But if I'm up there trying to remember words and I'm trying to right, sing, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> You're like, I just want something that works. <laughs> I, I just need something that isn't, nothing is in my way at any time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Well, everybody, please check out um, Rob McNelly's uh, latest single, Right, right Back to You. And yeah. also the new one's coming out in August. Um, I think it's August 2nd. Circus is leaving town. Yeah, um, yeah. It's great to chat with you. I, I have a, a real big love for Nashville yeah. and that whole scene. A lot of, lot of Dave Pomeroy, all these different guys that we all know. Um, just yep. really great, great pe people, great folks down there. Great food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Barbecue, Rip which is what I personally love. But yeah. uh, yeah. also, Rob, it's it's great to, to get a chance to chat with you. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, if you get out to Vegas, uh, please let me know. Maybe we can meet up for lunch or something. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so much and have a have a have a great day. Thank you too, Daryl. Cool. Oh. So that's it. <laughs> All right, man. Short and sweet. Uh, wow, yeah, that's cool. crazy. I totally bought the studio thing. I, totally I know. Fun, I, I I interviewed Joe Bonamassa um, like two weeks ago and it was he yeah. was going through my gear. He goes, Well, that looks like a <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's all fake, but <laughs> that's hilarious, man. See, I'm yeah. so naive about that. <laughs> oh wow, well, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not not much better. But I, I like doing the podcasting is fun. I've got a chance to to meet some fun folks, and and uh, yeah. it's, it's it's a cool it's a cool platform for people to learn about people that maybe they don't know of. The session thing is tough because a lot of people don't know your they don't know your name, 
but they've heard yeah. you play a million times, right? Well, yeah, and that's the thing about, you know, like we were talking about earlier with records, albums, I should say. Like, I mean, I always read the credits. I always knew these names because right. I was always fascinated. And you could read it, you know. Yeah. It was easy to look at and read. But, uh, yeah, now nowadays we're pretty invisible, I think, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, you're working, though. That's good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's all you want, really. You're working and you don't have to sit on a bus. So that those are both wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, that's true. The people yeah. that cash the checks know who I am. That's that's yeah, that's I'm the doing. important part of it. Cool, man. Have a great have a great day, and uh, right, I'll look, I'll check out when the next single comes out. I'll make sure I check it out. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. All right. Have a good day. Bye.